Hey expats and travelers alike, I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. Join me as we drive 15 minutes north of Evra to a town called Achiolos. There we meet Afrora. She's Albanian living in Denmark. She's a serial expat who's changed houses over 40 times. Now get this, this is the first property that she's ever purchased. Only time's gonna tell if she settles down there, but we're gonna meet the couple from Maid of Lisbon who made this property acquisition possible. But before we do that, let's get to know Afrora. My name is Afrora Stinice. I'm originally from Albania. I'm 41 years old. Um, I currently reside in Denmark. I have a fulfilling career as a procurement professional in a UN agency headquartered in Copenhagen, Denmark, and uh, I'm in charge of uh, contracting for medical supplies. All right, so let's meet the team from Made of Lisbon, Mia, who's an expat from China, and Rafael, who's Portuguese. How did Afrora find you? Oh, in this case, it was pretty easy. We were friends already before, so it was like uh, trying to help a friend to get, in this case, a property in Portugal within the budget that we had uh, available from her side, and uh, we tried to make it uh, as better as possible. So in this case, it was uh, friendship, pure friendship. All right, so we're here at uh, Afrara's property in Arreolos. This is actually the main entrance of the property. We just uh, turned here right and we'll enter through the, the other entrance. Okay. So it's quite big, this, this property, and, uh, with a huge potential for the renovation. How do you go about identifying properties for your clients? Well, usually the clients give us a budget and we have to try to fit or really fit into their budgets. And then it's basically looking for what is really important in real estate, which is location, location, location. Everybody knows about that. And location can be location in Lisbon, if you're in Lisbon, and in this case, location in Arreoz, if you're in Arreoz, right? Or in yes. any other city, in every place, look, or in a deal for real estate, Location is the most important thing. And That's are there the some way. certain things that you look for in a property that make it particularly good value? Yeah, sometimes, uh, well, imagination sometimes when it is for renovation projects, imagination and try to foresee how it's going to be later on after the renovation. I would say that's the most important thing. You try to predict what you can do from this property. Um, for a lot of people seen this way, would not uh, have much of value, but if mm. you can predict what you can do on it, then the value is over there. So sometimes, and most of the times, buying gold and then renovating is the best deal for an investor. Okay. Well, are there any red flags that you look for when you're looking at a property? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stability for sure. Foundations is the, is the first one. It must be solid at least, right? And then uh, isolation, mold, uh, um, sewing system, electricity also. So those are red flags that you should always be aware. Ventilation, um, how comfortable is in terms of temperature, in terms of soundproof. So there's a lot of uh, things that you need to pay attention. When it comes to the electrical and plumbing, are you able to get discounts when those things are quite old or is it right. something that's already in the price in the listing? So following your, your uh, first question or previous question, so mm -hmm. the most important is location and, that, and then the, the potential of the property. And uh, later on, you try to use arguments for starting the negotiation with the seller. So since our side is always the buyer's side, we need to focus on trying to get them the best deal possible, the, a deal that we would feel comfortable with. So then we can use uh, those things and other strategies for uh, negotiation as low as possible, the entry price for our clients. Okay, you ready to go in? Let's go. All right. You please, first. So we're going to show you guys around this property, but we're going to stay here. I'm going to ask Rafael a few more questions about how he goes about organizing these deals. Uh, I'm curious to know, uh, what types of things do you look for to make a good deal for your client? So it's all about the potential and when it's properties that needs renovation, right? That's a different, a completely different market. In this case, it's a property that needs renovation and it's all about uh, the renovation, what you can do with it. Like after, 
what kind of project you can do in it to make it look like much better than before. And it's not just changing the toilets, it's not just changing the kitchens, it's much more than that. It's work on the comfort side, it's working on the isolation side, it's making something that can be unique in the property and standing it out from other properties around in the same market. Mm. And uh, at the end, when you conclude the renovation project, still the price and the value of the property must be at least in line with the markets. Okay, so let's chat to Afrora and see what she thinks of her new property. I'm like a kid in a candy box. It's all new for me. I'm actually uh, excited to be in this very first house that gets so much uh, sun and it really, um, uh, as uh, maybe the viewers will see, it has two different entrances. Um, it, it, it's really it has really the, the character of uh, of an um, alentejan uh, house inside the, the the plans are the rooms are in different plans so you have uh, you have to go up and down small stairs that's the stairs and it's like a maze actually um, also inside that's all it it adds to its charm because um, it's not the, the square and uh, perfect uh, house but it has this these imperfections which i think make it uh, unique we know that this is a, a pretty funky design here there's two entrances we have a lot of steps i'm assuming this is normal in alentejo but if you can describe what exactly we're looking at here yeah in this particular case it was great even uh, the properties would be this way it's uh, actually like a maze so um, i don't know how people were living here like going from one room to another room and then turn right and then turn left would be quite complicated most of the time. So, but in this case, for this renovation project, since we are doing a full renovation of this property, we are using that natural flow of the property that already had it before to divide it into three different units. Mm. So in this case, it really works to be this way. It was one of the things that we paid attention at the beginning when we showed this first to Aflora and mm. let her take the decision. But we told her immediately what it was possible to do. And in this case, it's uh, out of one property only, we can do three independent properties um, that can be communicating uh, between themselves if the, they want to, or it can be completely independent easily. So it's quite interesting at the end. So she's buying this property as an investment, but then also potentially to live in herself. Is that correct? Yes. Um, the, the owner of this property doesn't live in Portugal, but uh, plans to come and stay more and more mm -hmm. uh, in Portugal, and in this case in uh, Arreolos. And uh, yes, it's seen as an investment opportunity and also a place to have a, you know, a pied de terre for herself when she's in town and enjoy her new property. It will be a new property after the renovation. So it's my understanding the property was listed for 120 and you guys got a bit of a discount yes. on it. So how much was the property and then how much do you expect to spend in renovations and what kind of um, overage budget do you guys um, try to build in? Is it 5%, is it 10% for those things that might pop up that you're not expecting? Right. So in this case, um, the listing price of this property was listed in an agency, but we ended up uh, contacting directly the, the, the sellers itself, the mm. previous owners. Uh, why was that? Because the, the agency that had it listed did never gave us feedback. Okay. So we found out ways to go and try to contact directly the, the sellers. Mm -hmm. It was a couple, they were divorcing, they, they needed to sell. And uh, one of the, I would say, one of the, the things that we learn most to do beside the renovation is to negotiate. I actually, it's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, uh, yeah, we negotiated as uh, possible, the better that we could do to, in this case, to get the best deal for our client, which is Aflora. So she ended up buying this property of 240 square meters with a garden of uh, 50 square meters more on the back uh, for 102 and 500 euros. 
Wow. So this was a very affordable property for this side and uh, with the potential to divide it into three independent units will be, I think she was happy with this. And what's your renovation budget? So for the renovation, uh, we expect to spend uh, as uh, a maximum of 140,000. Uh, we'll try to not even uh, uh, be on that uh, maximum target. We wanted to make it a little bit uh, less. We're working to for getting a better deal for her also. But the maximum that she gave us was 140, which for a property of this size is not that much. Yeah. And for the amount of work that we will need to do here, including pool, garden, uh, dividing, everything will be new after. So it's a totally new property. Okay, and as you guys are going to be the ones managing the property from, from the rental side, yeah. what types of yields can an investor in, uh, expect in Evora or just outside of Evora in Alentejo? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that the yields in the countryside are worse than in Lisbon or any other major city okay. because the entry price when you enter in a property in Lisbon you would look at least for around 300,000. Right. At least in Porto a little, be, little less but uh, it's not that different. So the, your yield is smashed uh, uh, once you enter by initially buying the property. So the goal here is to give uh, a fixed yield and uh, try, try or work in a way to have zero uh, worries for the, in this case, for the owner or for the future landlord. So we offer a fixed yield and then later on we just work with the property and market it in a way to generate uh, income for us as property managers and also for the, the owner. And also and uh, for these properties that we have from our clients and the ones that we do property manage, we put ourselves the money for the full decoration of the property. So okay, so you guys are the ones that are paying for exactly. the furniture, the decorating. It's, it's the owner that's actually paying for the, the kind of the renovations, the reconstruction. Exactly. Okay. The owner pays for the renovation and we pay for the decoration. And this is um, so simple for everybody. It's uh, clear and transparent uh, rules for everybody. And then at the end, it will be good for uh, all. So let's figure out why Afurora chose Alentejo. So I wanted a place that is closer to, uh, as close as possible to the, uh, the Portuguese culture. I think also that Alentejo is underrated in the sense that it is laced with historical places and uh, they have their own charm uh, and uh, and the pace of life is completely different the food is amazing in Alentejo. this is what Alentejo is known for and uh, and particularly on Arreolos what uh, what uh, enticed me is the fact that it's uh, an artisanal small city where they produce carpets that are their own trademark um, in a way and I love tapestry and I love hemp crafts so this is uh, this is what made the difference. Why should someone choose Alentejo as a place to invest and live in? Market prices here are still um, much lower than in other locations of Portugal. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to come here out of Lisbon or any other major city in Portugal because the infrastructures in Portugal, it's easy to reach out to any, any destination in the countryside. From Lisbon to here is around one hour driving, so it's not that much. And in a one hour driving, we, you will be in a completely different place, um, very friendly neighborhood uh, with a different pace for living. Uh, weather also here is quite sunny all year round mm -hmm. so it's uh, an opportunity now with last year the the search for properties in the countryside and particularly in Alentejo rose at 30 percent compared with the year before so during the covid year yes the the people were looking for properties in the countryside mostly in a, in Alentejo district because they can have a yard, they can have a bigger place for a fraction of they can have in, uh, in Lisbon or any other major city. And these are both foreign and local buyers? Both. Okay. Both. both. Great. Yeah. 
actually now we are also um, recommending much more the countryside to our clients. Most of our clients are overseas investors. And uh, with the end of the golden visa process in Lisbon and other, and other cities, we are already positioned ourselves in the countryside and try to get uh, the deals as best, as best as possible, while there's still not much of people searching in the countryside. So we are getting some great locations in the countryside now for our clients. And uh, hopefully it will become much more. I see. And can you quickly highlight what those changes in the golden visa process, <coughs> at least for the, the real estate side of the golden visa, what that's like? Uh, yeah. So uh, the changes is that uh, uh, till the end of this year, we're talking now it's 2021, mm -hmm. everything will stay the same. Uh, it won't have any change. So the ones who do the, their applications still this year, nothing changed for them. For the ones who we will apply only after 2022, then the biggest change is that uh, you basically can only invest in the countryside and also in the islands of Madeira and uh, Azores, and that's it. No Algarve, no Lisbon, no Porto, no any city in the literal coast of Portugal, only in the countryside. And then the entry price will also be higher than what it is now. For now, for a renovation project with older than uh, in a property older than 30 years old, it's 280,000 euros property, mm -hmm. including uh, renovation. Okay. Starting in 2000, January 2022, it will be 350,000. So okay. the prices will um, go a bit more expensive, expensive at that time, and that will, I am sure, will increase the price also of the properties in the countryside. Mm -hmm. So buying now, it's entering in the right time, because later on it will be increasing the price for sure. That's what happened before in Lisbon and then Porto also, and now it will happen in the countryside, especially in some locations we can already see that. Evra, for instance. Okay. Well, let's move up to the top and we'll talk a, a bit more about the business. How's that sound? Let's go. Let's go. So could you explain your business approach? So we're made of Lisbon. We are uh, based, based in Portugal. We specialize in purchasing and rental properties for our overseas clients uh, in Portugal. Okay, and what's the spectrum of projects that you work on? So what's the smallest one that you've worked on and then what's the largest? So basically, when it comes to acquiring uh, properties for our clients, we, uh, we do the whole cycle. We offer the service for the whole cycle mm. from uh, searching the listing in the open market and to all the way to renovation uh, with architect and interior designer. Also, at the end, we will take over the, the management side as well. So if you're only talking about the renovation part, the smallest part would be an apartment in Lisbon. Uh, our budget was around 50,000 euros okay. for a two-bedroom apartment. So what are your fees like? If someone wants to work with your company, what are the fees like? What, what should they expect? Uh, for rental service, we charge a 750 flat fee okay. uh, for our clients to look for rental properties until they sign the contract. Okay. Uh, overseas, basically, most of our clients are, are doing everything remotely. And then uh, for acquiring property, our flat fee is 1500 That includes uh, research, analysis, and also we're in Alentejo, we drive around, we take trips, and then we, we talk to the local realtors and the owners. So this is kind of different because from what we've heard, it's a little tricky when you're the buyer trying to, to approach an agent and get a property. But what you're saying is you've now become the buyer's agent. They're going to pay you a fee. And that way it makes it easier to work with the seller agent, right? Correct. Because our fee not includes uh, what I mentioned. It also includes uh, we really deep, do a deep dive on the potential of the property. Okay. And we check out the structure with the architect. We also, if the, everyone knows the rule, if you are uh, representing the buyer, you can share the commission with the seller's agent. Right. We don't ask for that. Okay. If it becomes a burden for our negotiation on behalf of our client, because we also take incentive from negotiation. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's totally okay. We just want to get the best deal. And who should work with you? What, what type of client do you guys work with? What's their profile like? Uh, 
That's a very interesting question. First of all, uh, we don't do any marketing. We haven't done. Uh, all of our clients are coming from uh, referrals from the previous clients. Okay. And they are from everywhere, from Asia, Middle East, US, UK, Europe, they're everywhere. And then uh, I think what they want is they recognize the value of our service instead of searching, for example, on Idilishta themselves and yeah. trying to contact people. And uh, they really want someone that they can trust to do the work for them and professional work. Why should someone go with Made of Lisbon to purchase their next home here in Portugal? I really want to make it um, even more explicit that actually um, they would be uh, one's eyes, one's brain, one's uh, hands, arms, feet to find the right property um, for, uh, for you. They are the, your ambassador. So why should someone choose Made of Lisbon over all of the other companies that do real estate and project management and things like that? Uh, I mean, it's an open market for everyone. Sure. Um, what we offer is a very niche service. Um, we are not uh, we are not realtors. We don't have any listings by choice. Um, I think if you want a professional opinion and you want uh, someone local to do the, the groundwork, we're here. And we, because we also offer the whole cycle, I cannot imagine, when I moved here, I couldn't imagine um, to look for a construction company mm. or who fixed my roof. I didn't have the contact. Now mm -hmm. I do. That's great. And looking to the future, do you guys have any plans, uh, any sort of other offerings that you're going to have? Um, yes, okay. uh, it, which is a pretty big step because we have uh, more and more projects to do. Uh, for property acquiring, we don't only offer uh, clients for investment, we also offer for uh, golden visa, non-golden visa investment and, and move in, basically finding the dream home. And we have more and more uh, renovation project coming up. So the next step, uh, we we are planning to open our own construction company. Okay. <laughs> Which will take some time to set up. We have our very, very trusted partners so far when it comes to construction and architect. Mm. Um, but sometimes the good ones are usually extremely busy. Right. So for, for some clients, they are in a rush of doing things and we really want to help them uh, respect their timeline. If you guys want to know more about Made of Lisbon, we have a link in the description section below for you guys to check out. Let them know Expats Everywhere sent you. And if you're interested in more about properties in Portugal, click this link right here. We made a playlist just for you. Now let's get moving. <laughs>